Hey everybody. Today we're constructing beautiful box plots in R using the qplot command. There are lots of different ways of doing box plots in R, but I think the most beautiful come from the ggplot2 package found in the tidyverse family of packages. And within that package, the easiest way to get started is using the qplot command. So that's what we're going to dive into today. Now, if you haven't used any of these functions before, you'll need to start by installing these family of pack this family of packages onto your machine with the install.packages command. And the name that we want to use is tidyverse. It only has one Y. This will be fairly quick for me because I've already installed this once. For you, it might take a few minutes. It'll download a bunch of new functions and install them on your machine. Again, you only need to do that once. But every time you start a new session in R, you have to let it know that you actually want access to those functions with the library, parenthesis, tidyverse command. And this will actually load those packages into memory. It will attach those packages. There are many different very useful functions in these packages. Um, as your proficiency in R grows, you'll find tremendous use for a great number of them. Here, we're just going to use the qplot command in the ggplot2 package. All right, so let's do two different examples of box plots. First, let's just manually input some data. So here I'm putting in a vector of length 21. We'll call it scores. This might represent, for example, scores of um, students on a math exam, a class of size 21. All right, let's get a box plot of this. So um, we want to do a qplot. And um, the basic syntax of qplot always is the same. You tell um, qplot which variables you want on which axes, and then you tell it how to actually display those variables. So for example, histogram or frequency polygon, scatter plot. In this case, we're going to want a box plot. So um, let's plot the scores on the x-axis, and then use the geom argument to, uh, to specify that we want a box plot. There we go. So you can see the scores going left and right, and the data is displayed as a box plot. Now I promised you beautiful um, box plots, and this probably doesn't qualify yet. We have a lot of things that we can do to make this look better. My main gripe with this graph is actually not even stylistic. It's mathematical. On the vertical axis right now, those numbers, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on, don't have any meaning. They're just uh, inserted um, by R for absolutely no good reason. So we'd like to remove those. We'd also like to potentially add some color. We'd like to be able to change our labels. And of course, we'd want to be able to rotate this so that the box plot goes vertically if we like. All right, so let's start by getting rid of those um, numbers on the left that have no meaning. We've said that we want the scores to be on the x-axis. and um, R has just kind of inserted something on the y-axis by default. So let's specify that we don't want it to do that with y equals quote unquote. And that'll remove those ugly labels. Great. Now let's um, see how to rotate this. So I've said so far that I want the scores going left and right. If I want the scores going up and down, that means the vertical axis y. And then I'll leave no, I'll, I'll remove the label from the horizontal axis. There we go. Again, a horizontal versus a vertical box plot is largely just a stylistic choice. Um, different stats professors will teach it slightly differently. I don't think there's a major difference between the two. Let's get some color in here. So um, we have two different options for color. We can either do the color of the lines, the actual box and the arms that come away from it, or we can do the interior color. So let's start with the color of the lines. The command there is color equals or call equals. And if we just want one color, it's I parenthesis quote. And let's go with dark blue. So there we go. Doesn't look massively different. Let's add a fill. Let's put uh, some color on the inside as well. The command there is fill. I parenthesis quote. And let's go with light blue this time. Okay, so this box plot is starting to look a little bit more professional. 
Obviously, we could have made uh, better graphic design decisions in terms of the color. Last thing I want to do on this example is just to tinker with the labels a little bit. Let's uh, remember that we can change the label on the y-axis with y lab equals quote, and let's just go with scores. There we go. And we can add a title to the graph with main equals quote. And how about just math exam? There we go. There are many other options available. You can change the fonts and the display sizes um, and the point sizes on these labels. You can Google all of that. Instead, let's move on to another example. Next, I want to work with a built-in data set. It's going to be the chick weights data set. There it is. So this consists of um, 71 observations with two different variables, the weights of different chicks and the feeds they were given. So here we have a, a, not only a quantitative variable, but a corresponding categorical variable. And what I'd like to do here is to get a side-by-side -side box plot showing the distributions of the different weights of these chicks across the different sorts of feeds that they were getting. Okay, so again, we're going to use a qplot command. There's several different ways of working within the qplot command here when dealing with a data set. The way I'm going to do it here is by first specifying what data set I'm using with data equals and then the name of the set, chick weights. Now we can proceed exactly like we did before, specifying what we want on the x-axis, then what we want on the y-axis, and then explicitly letting qplot know that we want to do box plots. So here, let's make a vertical box plot. Let's have the weights go vertically, and let's get a box plot um, for each different kind of feed. So that's going to go left and right. So the categorical variable feed is going to go on the x-axis, and the quantitative variable weight is going to go on the y-axis. So now R is going to go through um, and group the weights by the different sorts of feeds and then plot a box plot for each different group. So before we actually plot it, let's remember, oops, geome equals quote box plot. All right, there we go. Let's zoom in on this a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. There we go. So you can see you've got the variable names as your labels, weight and feed, and then the categorical variable values, um, sunflower, soy, soybean, meat meal, and so on, are labeled left and right. So this doesn't look too bad already. And as before, we could mess with the labels. We could change the entire color of the graph just like before. We could add a main title with main equals. Here, however, I want to do something um, a, a little bit different. I would like to color this graph by the different sorts of feeds so that each one of these um, box plots has a different color. And um, the qplot command supports this in a very simple way. So let's go back to the previous command. We have told um, qplot that we want feed to be mapped to x weight to be mapped to y, now we would like to have color corresponding to different um, feeds as well, or perhaps fill. Let's actually do fill. I think that'll look nicer. So let's do fill equals. Now previously we did i parenthesis quote and then a color name to specify that we wanted the same color for the whole graph. Here we're going to want the fill to be different based on what feed we're in. And so the syntax there is fill equals the name of the variable. So qplot's going to use a different color for each different feed, like so. There we go. We could have changed the, um, the color of the um, exterior of the black surrounding boxes and arms as well. Um, I think this already is starting to look fairly professional. Certainly not bad for about five minutes of work. 